When I was a student during my undergraduate study, I always wished and wanted to do a speciality training in oral and maxillofacial surgery. This dream stayed with me until I graduated. And in 2014, I was lucky enough to move to the UK. Because of the situation in my country, I couldn't stay. I had to move there and start a new life. In the UK, to reach this goal and do speciality training in oral surgery or oral maxillofacial surgery, it's a long route and long way to go. I've applied to universities. I've applied to so many different universities to try to get an offer, but like all my applications were rejected due to the fact that I was freshly graduated. I'm new. I don't have enough experience and I don't have the paperwork required to apply to these masters. So I was stuck there. I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. Then I decided to focus on my qualification exams, but the speciality remained a thing, a dream I wanted to get to. I worked on my ORE, I passed the exams, and I started to build up my CV to fill the gaps to uh, satisfy these conditions from these universities to be able to obtain an offer from these universities. Lucky enough, in this year, I've applied to so many universities, I managed to secure three unconditional offers from three big universities in the UK, Manchester University, Queen Mary University, and UCL two of which were oral surgery and one is prostodontics. I managed to get these offers not by accident or chance. I managed to get it by filling these requirements, working hard, knowing the system, know how things go and the specific requirements, how to do the interviews, how to manage these expectations. And Alhamdulillah, all went well and here we are. I am choosing, they are not choosing me. A lot of dentists nowadays and of you colleagues and peers, they come to me, reach to me by the DMs or posts on the Facebook group asking about masters and specialities in the UK. How can I study masters? How can I become a specialist in the UK? Or another question I keep having and keep coming up on my feed that I've got an oral uh, surgery uh, membership or M oral surgery from the Royal College of Surgeons or M auth from the Royal College of Surgeons or MRD, all of these like memberships from the Royal College of Surgeons. Can I work in the UK without doing any exams? Am I a specialist in the UK if I've got this uh, degree? Can I work um, in Dubai or in Saudi with these degrees as a specialist? All of these questions I'm going to answer in this video, give you a brief um discussion and explanation about it so stay tuned and let's find out soon hello colleagues and friends again my name is dr anas al musalli and i'll go through uh, what i mentioned in this video about the masters and the specialities in the uk thanks again to everyone who's been supporting the channel supporting me by like share or subscribe i really appreciate everything and i hope your support to continue on and to see this channel growing so i keep uh, pushing harder giving you more content and more value in this video masters what is masters master degree is a degree we do after we graduate with a BDS degree in dental surgery or doctorate in dental surgery, whatever undergraduate degree we've got, we can then apply to study master's. Master is a year or three years long program delivered by a university. In this year or three years, there are specific requirements we have to cover. We have to write a thesis of maybe up to 15,000 to sometimes more words. There will be a research uh, part. There will be some clinical part in this master's. The master lasts, as I said, between one to three years. It can be either full-time or part-time. Just to mention, not all masters will grant you a speciality training. Some masters, by completing them, you can get master's degree and uh, speciality training to be registered uh, in the GDC. However, not every master allow you to do this. So what universities can offer you masters? A lot of universities in the UK can offer you masters. Nowadays, masters are like more like a business. Universities making a lot of money from it, especially from overseas students. The thing is, we have to know before we apply why we're applying for masters. Is it speciality training we're seeking? Is it moving to the UK to be able to settle down, to do the exams and uh, live in the UK? Or I just want the speciality, get it from the UK, get the degree and then travel back to my country, go back to the Gulf uh, countries and work there. So we have to put exactly what is our goal and to work towards that. So masters, if we want to 
do it to come to the UK. Some people now looking for one master, one year uh, long masters like dental public health. And when we get this master, we'll get a visa. On this student visa, we'll come to the UK. We can work during the master's year and then we can also prepare for the ORE. After graduation, we'll be granted two years of graduate visa from the home office so we can look for a job and we can prepare still for the ORE exam. So the specialties, specialties is a different story it's a master's plus some other documents needed to be submitted to the GDC to satisfy the conditions and be granted the speciality training title or a specialist title. So what are the recognized dental specialities by the GDC? There are by the GDC as they mentioned on their website 13 different dental specialities. Varies from oral surgery, ortho, perio, peds, um, prosto, restorative, endo, any of these masters up to 13. There will be dental radiography, dental microbiology. Um, not all these specialities have specific course by universities to do them, but there will be a way to do this. Um, it's all mentioned on the GDC. But the big specialties, the uh, things like we know, uh, like ortho, oral surgery, perio, peds, uh, prosto, all like has its own specific qualifications and requirements to meet to be able to register with the GDC. So specialty trainings, how can we become specialists in the UK? First thing first, if you want to be registered as a specialist on the GDC list, you have to be a GDP. You have to pass your ORE and LDS exam or you have to be a qualified dentist in the UK, either graduated from Europe or graduated from the UK. Specialist list, you have to be on the GDC list as a general practitioner. And then we can work towards becoming a specialist on the specialist list. Specialities, there is different ways of doing the specialities I'm gonna go through them one by one so the first possible way to become a specialist in the UK is to do the NHS national recruitment route this route is you apply to the NHS to do the speciality this starts by you qualify by passing the ORE or the LDS or graduate from UK University do the DFT year or the dental foundation training or the vocational training PLVE so first year under the NHS with a mentor then you apply to do the DCT which is dental core training in the hospital then you apply for DCT to dental core training to in hospitals then you apply for speciality training in hospitals all of these DCT 1 2 and 3 they are almost similar process to get accepted. They will be a situational judgment test where it, they will judge your assessments and the management of situations where you have to answer specific scenarios and put things in order and show them that you've got logic thinking. And there is an interview and according to these two interview and situational judgment tests, you will get a rank. According to this rank, you will either be offered a placement to do a DCT or speciality training or your rank is too high and you can't even get a placement. Some people do all of this and they won't get an offer. So they apply the next year and they try again and they try again. So it's not guaranteed. It's very competitive. Uh, people graduated from the UK are more experienced in doing these things because they were trained to do it and to do these exams and interviews during their undergrad. While an overseas dentist may struggle with this, but you may be able to do it. It's tough but I haven't done it, so um, let's see what you can do. So if you went this route, then NHS National Recruitment, after completion of this speciality, three years in hospital, and uh, you will study at university doing a research component. After you finish, you'll be granted what we call CCST, or Certificate of Completion of Speciality Training from the NHS. You'll be allowed to sit the associated membership exam from the Royal College of Surgeons of that speciality. You will have a portfolio, you take all of these paperwork, give them to the GDC and they will grant you a specialist list number and you will be specialist on the GDC specialist list. It's like nearly an automatic procedure and when you finish you'll be automatically registered on the GDC as a specialist. With this route, as an NHS uh, speciality, when you go through it, you will get paid every year about 45 to 55,000 pounds. It depends on the year you do in your speciality and even during your DCT. So you'll get some fixed salary per year. That's before tax. So that's the benefit from it. And then you will pay also the university fees from your own money. So you get paid from the hospital and then you pay the university where you go and do your master's. So the second route, it's 
So I'll call it the non-CCST route. If you're qualified as a dentist in the UK and you want to do a specialty training program in the UK, but not through the NHS, you can do this by applying directly to universities, what we call it direct access. So there will be the masters of three years clinical full time. You can apply directly to universities. You have to satisfy the entry requirements from English to uh, clinical experience to uh, MFDS, whatever requirements they need you have to have it and then you apply if you get accepted you pay the fees from your own money there will be no payment from the hospital because you applied as a direct access student after you complete this during your study you have to do your own portfolio you have to do your own directly observed procedures we call it dobs and adepts and when you fill all of these things you take your application and submit it to the gdc to be assessed through a process called slaa so uh, specialist list uh, uh, application assessment they will assess your application and check if your uh, education and what you've got in your training matches the requirement from the nhs specialist list and if you match it you'll be registered if not they will ask you for some extra evidence like um, can you show us some reflective writing can you show us more of the cases you've done and directly observed procedures from your supervisor so they may ask you for extra paperwork but at the end you will manage to be registered as a specialist by this route as well and the third route is the toughest one between them all. If you're registered as well as a, as a dentist in the UK, so you've done your ORA or LDS, and you've done masters in your country, in your home country, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, any country, Pakistan, India, and then you want to qualify here as a specialist, as like the same specialty you did in your country. So you have to submit similar application form to the non-CCST route. So again, SLAA application. Uh, they will assess you training in your home country what you've done in your research if there is anything missing audit uh, publications if there is any cases need to be covered more if you need to show more like implant cases if you need to show more also cases they will ask you to cover these uh, missing uh, skills or training so you have to go and do maybe more masters or you have to work in hospitals under direct supervision from uh, advisors so you have to find the way to fill these gaps and if you manage to do so you'll be able to register as a specialist on the gdc the GDC at the moment is working on changing the non-CCST route. So for people who did direct access to universities without the NHS route to make it like an automatic also procedure to be registered as specialist on the GDC specialist list. So they are making some changes. So hopefully um, it will be easier. There will be some application fee to pay for your uh, application assessment. It's not too much. I can't remember how much, but it's not a big deal. Um, any of these applications, if you have to file it and do it uh, that slaa you may need a lawyer or someone experienced in the gdc laws that can support you with your application so what are the entry requirements for these implant dents or the master in clinical dentistry the msc in clinical dentistry the first thing is we have to look at masters clinical three years full time if we want to get speciality upon completion of these courses. The entry requirements almost on all of these courses in all universities are similar. One, you have to be uh, graduated from uh, dental school, have a BDS degree. You should have two years of experience at least. You should have an MFDS, MGDF, or any of these memberships from the Royal College of Surgeons. You should have some publications, uh, experience in research, uh, poster, some audit, uh, teaching experience, the more you have, the better chances you get to get accepted and the English requirement as well. In addition to the funding, you should show them that you can fund yourself and pay for your fees. The fees can be home or overseas. Overseas is double or triple the amount for home students. So home students, if you are a British citizen or you have the indefinite leave to remain or you're a refugee, then you'll be treated as a home student. Otherwise, you are an overseas. So how competitive it is to get a place or an offer in these masters? It is very competitive. The places are uh, small, not a lot of numbers, the competition is really high. So uh, get an idea and prepare yourself that you will be rejected maybe in the first year, in the second year, you may get, get accepted in the third, may not. So there will be a chance that you will get rejected. But if you keep going, you should apply the next year, the year after, if you really want to do this speciality. But every year you should show them that you have improved, you have done maybe more 
uh, research, you have done more work, you have done audits, you have worked on your teaching experience. So show them that you've got dedication towards this goal and you really want it. Also should show them that you've got this kind of ambition and uh, big need to do this speciality. So you really want it just like uh, you fighting and you just want it anyway. And last thing but not least in this video, what about Gulf countries? If you are a registered specialist on the specialist list with the GDC, you can work as a specialist in Dubai or Saudi Arabia without doing anything extra. Um, having the membership of these specialities is not enough in some of these countries to work as a specialist, but I'm not quite sure. It's a big area and their rule is different than the UK ones, but things are changing every day. So read their own guidelines and see what you can do. I just want to send a message. Uh, there's a lot of people doing these membership exams, um, MORTH, um, MRL surgery, MRD, all of these memberships nowadays becomes more like of uh, money making courses rather than educational ones, especially in Egypt. But look at your options. If it's a good option and you get good value um, for your money, go for it. If it's not, focus on the ORE, do your exams, move to the UK, work, save up, do speciality training in the UK, do the membership exams, register as a specialist on the specialist list, and then do whatever you like. Stay in the UK, move to the Gulf countries. I hope this video was not long. I hope it was informative. You had a lot of information. It is long. There's more to discuss and more to talk about. So stay tuned to the channel. Follow, share and subscribe. And many thanks for all your support. If you've got any questions, just leave it down in the comments. Uh, reach out to me if you want on Facebook or Instagram. Um, the links are in the video description. Um, and if any of you want any help, support in special List, list applications, uh, finding the best speciality, applying to universities, applying for master degrees, you don't know what you want and you want the guidance, reach out to me. I will help and I'll give you all the experience I had in 10 years in the country to make your journey shorter, to save you a lot of money. Because it took me long, I didn't know what to do, but now I've got all of this experience. So I'm always here to help, just reach out. Many thanks for your support again. Uh, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.